Correct me if I'm wrong, but is it not the definition of irony when you're trying to make a tool and the very tool that you're trying to make would make making the tool easier? Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is the spindle on my lathe. The chuck mounts right here and I can put work in the chuck and do operations. But I wanted a way to lock the spindle. You're probably thinking, why would you ever want to lock your spindle? It needs to spin. That's how you make stuff. Well, sometimes when you are using a tap or a die on the work, it would be a whole lot more convenient if the spindle was locked so that all you had to do was rotate the tap or die. And so that's why I decided to make a lock for my spindle. These are the basic components of my spindle lock. Simple fabrication, nothing too complicated, a um, little bit of fitting, that kind of thing, but not a whole lot that would be worthy for you guys to see on a video. But I did want to show you the parts and pieces so that you could make something similar if you wanted. This is the main lock right here. It started out as a five by five piece of plate steel. I chucked it up in the four jaw chuck and bored out the hole to just slightly bigger than 100 millimeters, which is the size of my spindle flange. Uh, I won't bore you with a lot of video showing the removal of this material. So I've spent quite a bit of time machining this open, probably have a couple hours removing all that material. and. Like anything else where you're machining, you definitely want to sneak up on it. I think I'm pretty close, pretty much ready to make the final passes to get it to size. With one spring pass. If you're wondering why I'm using this bullnose live center uh, to hold this in place, it's because this uh, chuck weighs a fair amount and it's really hard to get back in here behind to remove the bolts that hold it into place. So by using the live center bullnose in this way, it supports this so that I can completely remove the bolts and not have to worry about it falling or moving, binding, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and pull it out. And again, I'm doing this by leaving it in the chuck so that I can set it back up if I need to take another pass. Magic moment, here we go. And that is a perfect fit. I am very happy with that. There is definitely uh, about five thousandths all the way around to play, which is what I was going for. And that will be perfect when the spindle lock is not being used. Well, I have it off. I wanna show you what I'm working with here. I have the piece in the chuck, and as you can see, there is a tiny little gap between the uh, jaws of the chuck and the piece that I'm working. And I've had to be very careful not to bring the boring bar much deeper than the quarter inch that it takes to get through this piece. Otherwise, I would run the boring bar into the jaws of the chuck. All right, I've removed the piece I was working from the chuck uh, so that now you can see it. And there we have it. Like I said, there is just a little bit of play and that's by design. That way we're not making a bunch of noise and, and a lot of drag, friction, all those kind of things on this part when it is loose. I then took some 5 8 stock and drilled it and tapped it for 3 8 and put it in this four and a half inch three eighths bolt with a spring in the middle. I compressed the spring significantly, cut the slot into the 
spindle stop and then welded it in place being very careful to not let the work get hot because I didn't want to take the springiness out of the spring. If you look on the inside here, you'll be able to see there's some silver tape inside. That's not permanent. That's not going to live there as a friction surface or anything like that. But what that does serve is a very small spacer so that when I mount this up, there's a slight gap on the bottom. I don't want the spindle to be rubbing on this brake when the brake is disengaged. So by using this tape, which has about two thousandths of an inch thickness, it gives me just a little bit of clearance. The only other thing I had to fabricate was I had to turn down a couple of spacers so that I can stand it off from the main body of the lathe and bolt it into place using these two 5 16 bolts. All right, let's get this fitted up so that I can drill and tap the holes. I'm going to start by placing the stop on the lathe. Like I said, we've got those two little thin pieces of tape there and there, just enough to create that space. Then we're going to put the spacer in here with the bolt. All right, so if we fit this spacer in here and work the bolt in, that gets us pretty close to where we need to be. Then I can take and put pressure on this, making sure everything's flat and true and tighten the spindle lock up. Obviously, once this is properly installed, it's not going to bounce around like that. Looks like I'm not quite parallel to the spindle, so we're going to want to adjust that ever so slightly. Well, that appears to be a pretty decent fit. I just need to get it so that it's sitting properly. With everything positioned properly, I'm going to pull out the bolt and see if I can start drilling. Now this drill is actually going to be too big. It's uh, 5 16 the size of the bolt but it will get me my initial starting point. And then once I have that, I will get the correct size drill and drill it out so it can be tapped for 5 16 That should be enough. Yep, we have a nice little divot back there. I need just over half inch of depth so that I can thread it properly and have enough bolt into the hole. I think that looks pretty good. With 575, I think that'll be enough. Gotta say, there's something a little unnerving about drilling and tapping a hole into a perfectly good lathe. It's not as stressful as when I was drilling and tapping the holes for the brackets for my DRO. They were much smaller taps and there wasn't a whole lot of place for me to move them should I break a tap. All right, I am bottomed out. All right, let's try installing this, see how it goes. With one hole drilled and tapped, mounted snugly, and the lock tightened up, I can drill the second hole, same way as before, just enough to get a little bit of a start. Okay, I've got a test fit, and sadly, when I was drilling, 
my holes wandered a little bit. You can see that this is not quite parallel with everything here. This one's up a little bit and this one's down a little bit. It's binding to the point where with it installed, the spindle's currently locked and I've got the lock loosened. So I'm gonna have to enlarge probably this hole, maybe this one, but probably this hole ever so slightly so that I can get the proper adjustment on this. It's unfortunate that that happened, but when you're free drilling holes, sometimes things wander a little bit and that's what happened to me. I've removed this top bolt right here and now the spindle spins freely. So that tells me that that is the hole that needs to be slightly adjusted. So after a lot of file fitting, I got it the way I want it. It's spinning freely, it's not rubbing. Now keep in mind those pieces of aluminum are still in there creating space, but I'm not getting any friction. So I think it's uh, gonna work for me. I had to file this hole down a little bit so that I can increase the gap between the spindle and the lock. Should work pretty well for me. I'm pretty happy with it. All that remains now is for me to remove it, take the tape off, put it back on, get it all set up and test it out. Fingers crossed, see if it makes any noise from contact. Sounds great to me. Let's get the chuck installed and see how well it works. See how it spins up. Seems to be working well. Let's tighten it down. It's locked. Let's unlock it. I'm gonna cycle it a few times. make sure that use doesn't create a clearance issue, although by sound I'll know it as soon as it happens. All seems well. Now let's do a test to see how well it actually locks. I'm applying a fair amount of force and the, the aluminum piece I have in there is actually, you can see it marking up. It's uh, bending and flexing. I think that will work. The only thing I'm going to have to be careful of is to make sure that I'm never turning the lathe on with it locked because that could be disastrous. I'm very happy with the results. The only other thing I had to figure out was a way to keep myself from accidentally turning the machine on when the spindle was locked. I came up with a very simple solution. I bent a piece of steel to slide in front of the power switch that I can move over and tighten down when I'm tightening up the lock. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Something. Well, that's a problem.